There probably is no God. Now stop worrying and enjoy your life. In 2009, the world's most famous atheist, Richard Dawkins, launched the Atheist Bus Campaign. His ambition was to inspire new converts to atheism by having 800 London buses emblazoned with the words, there probably is no God. Now stop worrying and enjoy your life. If only Catholics were just as evangelical. Because we live in a world of increasing technological expediency. A world where we can basically get what we want at the click of a button. And so our attention span gets shorter and shorter. And so we are intrigued, vulnerable, susceptible to pithy quotes like this. There probably is no God, so stop worrying and enjoy your life. And this trajectory of being imbibed or assimilated by pithy slogans is alarming. For in my humble experience, it's becoming increasingly rare to find deep thinkers, true critical thinkers, individuals who are fully alive, so to speak, in a passionate search for the truth, the truth about God, the truth about Catholicism, the truth about what it really means to be happy. Instead, people are increasingly inclined to follow those pithy slogans, catchy phrases, feel-good advertising, and let those phrases, adverts and slogans do their thinking for them. Admittedly, Dawkins was not as hubristic as to say, there is definitely no God. Because no matter what anyone might say, there are no absolute proofs that God does not exist. We might prefer not to know God, but that does not mean he does not exist. Or that there are no arguments that suggest he does exist. In fact, it's so important for Catholics to know and appreciate that there are very strong arguments that supports the reasonability of believing in God and believing in Christ and his church. Nevertheless, for all Dawkins talk about atheism being intelligent, bright and rational, his bus slogan did not appeal to people's minds or intellects, but to people's feelings. Stop worrying. Enjoy your life. Now what is being suggested here is probably one of the principal reasons not only why people abandon the practice of the faith, but also why people want to sideline faith altogether. If you give up believing in God, your worries about sin and virtue, death and judgment, heaven and hell will disappear. It sounds so attractive, no? And perhaps at times you and I can be taken in by that rhetoric. We hear the word commandment and we mistakenly think of condemnation. We hear the word catechism and we mistakenly think of control. We hear the word Catholic and we mistakenly think of displeasure or boredom. And so we avoid the challenge of Catholicism. We abandon the search for the truth. We live as if God is dead heaven a fool's dream and that to enjoy life means to be rich relaxed and recreated but on this Easter Sunday take a look around at our world dare to think deeply and critically for yourself does that slogan actually work for what do you see where does this rhetoric lead you to joy, to ecstatic fulfillment, to peace? No. The more God is excluded from one's own life and the life of others, the more we ignore the possibility or the responsibility to search for the truth, the emptier, the shallower, and the more frustrated our life becomes. So on this most holy of days, 
As Christian Catholics, I ask you, as I ask myself, what difference does your belief in God make to your life? If you did not believe that God existed, how would your life be any different? If on reflection we come to realize that actually my life would be very much the same, no different at all, then I say to you, as I say to myself, we are not living Catholicism. Because to be living Catholicism, as St. Paul makes clear today, is to strive to orientate your thoughts on heavenly things, the truest of things, and not to allow your life, your humanity, to be reduced to just an obsession with things in this world. Today, Easter Sunday, is a day to start again. Think about St. Peter in the Gospel, the first Pope. His example gives all of us hope. Remember, but a few days before he denied Christ three times, he ran away from the cross and sought comfort and consolation in a life apart from heaven. But St. Peter quickly came to realize that that is a lie. And he begins the search again. He runs to the tomb, finds an it empty, and all of a sudden his worldview is transformed. He saw and he believed. And everything changes as a result. The resurrection of Christ, God incarnate, was no longer just a piece of rhetoric a pious hypothesis or a nice story. It was a reality, a reality that St. Peter, as would nearly all the other apostles do, he sheds his blood for it. He literally will pour out his blood on the street of Rome for that reality. And by that witness, Catholicism spreads at an exponential rate. You will never shed your blood for an attractive slogan, but you will shed your blood for the reality and for the hard truth. So my brothers and sisters, I pray that you and I will strive to avoid the manipulation of easy rhetoric. Instead, let us embrace the challenge of living a new life, the real life, the promise of the resurrection, and so I say to you today, embrace the teachings of the church that you are tempted to dismiss as too hard, too controlling, too impractical, and tell me you did not find yourself become more free. Spend more time in front of the Blessed Sacrament, especially by becoming more Eucharistic, coming to Mass every Sunday, and tell me you did not find yourself become more alive in virtue. Spend more time studying and growing in the knowledge and historical rigor and intelligence of the Catholic faith. And tell me you did not find yourself become more enlightened. Be unashamedly Catholic. Allow your heart to be formed in what it means to rise from the dead. And I promise you, you will no longer worry you will enjoy your life because you will begin to have a foretaste of heaven on earth.